Hi, okay, welcome back to 5-Minute Physics. Uh, I'm going to step back, as I promised, after yesterday's uh, general relativity. And I'm going to begin, I think, a three-part series called Why Physics is So Simple. And we'll end, actually, with a with a episode, I think, talking about how physics being so simple allows you to win two Nobel Prizes that I'll talk about. Uh, but first, I want to begin with... Um, with uh, a set of examples that I actually talked about in one of my books called Fear of Physics. And um, so you may have seen me talk about it, and if you have, great, skip this episode. Uh, although I may, I may say some things that I haven't said before. But anyway, um, it, the book begins with uh, a joke of sorts, uh, which uh, involves a physicist, a, an engineer, and a psychologist who are called into a dairy farm to... Uh, evaluate uh, how to improve the production of the dairy farm. And the first person to, uh, they, they both spend, a, they all spend a week analyzing the situation and then make a report. The first person to make a report is a, an engineer who says, well, I've looked at the, uh, I've looked at the structure of the, of, the, of the barn and the milking tubes, and I think the milking tubes should be increased in diameter by 25% in order to allow better flow, and you could put more cows per cubic meter in the barn, and et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> the next person to come in is a psychologist who says, you know, I've looked at it, and I think the barn, the barn should be painted green. It'll be a nicer atmosphere for the cows. They'll feel happier. They'll give more milk, et cetera. And the physicist is called on, and of course, he requires a blackboard, or in this case, a piece of paper. And he says, um, he starts off by saying, Assume the cow is a sphere. And that's the joke. Okay, and the joke is that physicists see cows as spheres because uh, they see the world very simply. And it's a joke, but it, it actually is a joke that has some power. And I want to show you, as I do in the book, that actually assuming a cow is a sphere is not such a crazy, crazy thing to do. Uh, it's actually probably useful. It can be useful in certain cases. And you'll get some very general rules by ignoring all the details of a cow, I could I could draw a cow, but I'm never very good at that. So I can draw a cow, and a cow I suppose looks something like this. And anyway, and you see why I'm not drawing a cow. But here for me is a cow. Now, what's the pop, what's the beauty of assuming a cow is a sphere? Well, the point is there's lots of lots of things where you don't need to know all the details about the cow, you just need to know general scaling principles. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's say this cow is a sphere and has radius one, one meter, one whatever. So R equals one. So that let's just think about that. It means So R is approximately one. What's the area of, of that cow as a sphere? Well, you know, there's factors of pi and everything else, but all you need to know is that the area goes like the square of the radius for a period. It's for a sphere, it's pi r squared, but it doesn't matter about the pi's. The point is that it depends upon the square of the radius. It, you can remember that by remembering that that uh, areas in square meters or square centimeters, so you think of squares. So the area in this case also has sort of a scale of order one. What about the volume of a sphere? Well, the volume, as you now might have guessed, as we've used several times, goes like the cube of the radius. Um, so again, it's of order one here, okay? Now, what about, what about the mass of this cow? Well, the mass of the cow is proportional to total volume of stuff in there. So the mass is proportional to volume, and therefore um, also of order, uh, proportional to r cubed, and therefore also of order one, okay? Now, we can ask, what about a super cow? Why don't we make super cows? Why do we have so many individual cows? Why don't we make cows twice as big? That's a question you could ask, because if you had made cows, cows twice as big, you'd have only have to have fewer cows to get more meat or milk or whatever the heck you want. So let's imagine a super cow. In this case, a super cow would have a radius of two, twice as big. So you think the cow is, tw we always say if it's if the radius is twice as big, then the object is twice as big, but is that really a, a proper way of thinking of things? So if the radius is of order now two, what is the area of that super cow? Well, the area of the super cow goes as a radius squared, so the area is now four. So the super cow has an area of four times surface area, four times bigger than a regular cow 
which we said. So it's really, in that sense, an area in the case of area, not twice as big, it's four times as big. But what about the case of volume? Well, the volume of the super cow is now r cubed, and therefore it's eight times as big. So this super cow is a volume that's eight times bigger than the regular cow, even though you'd say the super cow is just twice as big. And then if you think about the mass of the super cow, the mass of the super cow goes like the volume, which is r cubed, and therefore this super cow is eight times more massive than the, than the, than the, than the cow. Okay, now, let's think about that. So the volume, the volume is eight times bigger, whereas the area is four times bigger. Okay, so the, if we think about the pressure on the skin of this cow, it's kind of mass per unit area. It's the total mass pushing down per unit area of the cow. But so, so let's think of mass per unit area for the regular cow. Well, that's one, since there, all these units are order one. But for the super cow, the, the mass is eight times bigger, whereas the area is only four times bigger. So the mass per unit area is now two. In fact, if you think about it, the mass per unit area for a cow of radius r, that mass per unit area increases as r. As r gets bigger, the mass per unit area increases as r. So what we see is that at a certain point, the mass per unit area is going to become so large that given the skin of the cow, the cow can't be held together. The pressure on the, on the surface of the cow is going to be so great that the cow will fall apart. So there's a limit biologically on how big you can make a cow, not by genetics, but by physics. Because physically, you won't be able to hold a cow together. Now the point is, this is true for a sphere, but if you think about all the rest of the aspects of volume and area, volume, surface area, and mass, that's going to be true more or less for any shape. So we don't have to worry about the detailed shape of a cow. We only have to think of the simplest thing we can think of, which is the overall scale of the cow, the, char the characteristic size of the cow, which, you know, can be R, and, and some characteristic size. And you double the characteristic size of the cow, you increase the surface area of the cow by 4, and the volume of the cow by 8. And you don't have to worry about all these additional complexities. So that's why the physicist thinks of the cow as a sphere because you can get so much without thinking of the cow, in fact, any of the details of the cow. And we now know that there's some size, some maximum size for cows beyond which you can't produce them independent of, of, of genetics just by the laws of physics. Now that may seem pretty trivial, but now let's say, let's, okay, let's make a slightly better approximation of a cow. We'll make an approximation of a cow with a head connected by a rod to a body. There, that looks a lot more like a cow. Now, what do we know? Well, if we scale up a, 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 this cow to be a super cow, what do we know as the scale increases if this is radius one and this is radius two for you know scale size of order one and scale size of order two here? What do we now know? Well, if we think about this, when we scale this cow up, the volume of the head is now eight times bigger than the volume of the head here. But, but what, is, what about this rod connecting the head and, and, the, and the body? Well, the rod, the strength of a rod is the surface area, is, is the area of the rod. It's proportional to the area of the rod, okay? The, the cross-sectional area. And the cross-sectional area, if I've doubled everything, the cross-sectional area of this rod versus this rod is now four times this four times bigger for this rod than it was for this rod. But the volume of the head is eight times bigger. Well, you see where we're going. Now we see that, in fact, uh, the rod, as, as, as you scale up a cow or any being, the mass of the head increases much faster than the strength of the neck that can hold it. And that means if you have very large animals, say dinosaurs, on average, the head has to be pretty small compared to the body because otherwise it, the, the, you couldn't hold the head up. Well, that helps explain why dinosaurs, uh, perhaps brains, weren't so large compared to their bodies as they scaled up. And one of the reasons that maybe dinosaurs couldn't survive uh, adequately when the situation changed when a, when a comet hit. The bottom line is we now see that the, the way animals are, 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 are built doesn't depend upon just genetics. It depends upon physics. There's a, literally 
you can only scale the head up a certain amount if you're going to have a large enough animal. It may also explain why the animals that have the largest brains relative to body size are not land animals, but dolphins and whales, because their buoyancy can hold them up. And so you learn an incredible amount about biology without doing any biology, without knowing any details, just by thinking about scaling. And that's the first lesson I wanted to give you. You can forget a lot of details in physics, and that's why physics is so easy, because just thinking of overall scales can tell us a tremendous amount, not just about cows or dinosaurs or dolphins, but about the rest of the world. Thanks.